Hello, welcome, buenos dias, is this thing on? Isn't that how you're supposed to start these these things? I'm actually not quite sure, but I'll go ahead and give it a whirl. So welcome to episode one of the podcast Acts the Gluten-Free Chef. I am the Gluten-Free Chef, and this is my podcast. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay. Welcome again. So, ask the gluten-free chef. This is going to be a hopefully succinct podcast. I don't have a lot of time to, you know, chat with you. So, I, I want to definitely make sure that I'm not as long-winded as I typically am with this this here first, this first post. So obviously, the point is to really hook you and hopefully you enjoy listening to my voice for the next 15 minutes or so. But I'll just go ahead and dive right in. So Axe the Gluten-Free Chef is is a space that I wanted to create to really be an extension of all of the creative work that I do as a chef, baker, blogger, and curator of the food blog, theglutenfreechefblog.com. So the Gluten-Free Chef blog is curated by myself. My name is Calvin. I am the gluten-free chef, obviously, and basically my blog is a space that I started in 2012 that basically features recipes, meal plans, product reviews, articles, and resources that are really tailored to those who, like myself, deal with the autoimmune disease of celiac, celiac disease, and also people who have other food allergies and other foodies just in general who believe in clean eating and clean living and eating whole foods and all of that. I try not to stick too close to labels because I'm at a point where I really don't like them. But in terms of how I eat, I consider myself a a plant-based foodie if, if you're going to go for a label. At one point, I was a very strict vegan, whatever that means. But but at this point, I feel like food... We food is food is the sub the sub substance that we need for that our bodies need and you know and in, in terms of being tied to a label just really my philosophy really is just that eating clean whole food as much as possible um, is the way to go but obviously because I have celiac disease those foods have to be gluten free so just so the 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 point of Axe the Gluten Free Chef will really be less about me and more about you and the the theory or the the concept is that you'll submit questions over time and there'll be a topic or maybe several topics each each episode of the podcast where I will be really answering what what you need me to answer. You know, I don't want to necessarily toot my own horn or consider myself this world-renowned expert, but, you know, living with celiac disease and eating gluten-free since 2009, I've definitely acquired a wealth of knowledge and information that that I really want to share and be a resource to you, and that's the purpose of this space and of my blog and of the writing that I do. I am a published author and et cetera, et cetera. So really, it's it's about what you want me to talk about, what you've asked, what you've submitted. And so um, because this is the first blog, there had to kind of be a jumping off point, a first question. So the question that really will be the focus of this podcast, this episode one, is who is the gluten-free chef? Um, and basically, the gluten-free chef is me, Calvin. I am the gluten-free chef. And as I mentioned, I am a, I'm the curator of the glutenfreechefblog.com. I am a gluten-free foodie. I am a wellness advocate, I guess. I am an author. I'm a teacher. I'm a son. I'm a brother. I'm a person. I'm a human being um, who happens to live with several different chronic and invisible illnesses, celiac disease being one of them. Um, but the most, the biggest one that I kind of contend with is, is fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome. And I don't really want to focus too much on those illnesses in this podcast, but just know that my journey to the, to this first episode was really significantly influenced by me also being a person living with fibromyalgia um, and chronic fatigue syndrome. But just to kind of get a jumping off point for, for this space in the Gluten-Free Chef blog, the blog is what I started in 2012, September, to be specific. So I'm actually pulled up my first blog post and I misspoke 
my first blog post for this blog, the Gluten-Free Chef blog, was on December 11, 2012. And really, I wanted to create a space where I wanted to share um, kind of my daily journey and in, in eating gluten-free and living as a celiac. Um, in my experience, I felt that I didn't have a lot of resources to go to, you know, when you get that celiac diagnosis or are converting to a gluten-free lifestyle for whatever reason, it's it's really difficult to to know kind of where to start. And I know I've, I've read different scenarios and anecdotes where people, they find themselves like really in a place of like fear where you're, you're you all of a sudden have to stop eating all the things you love to eat and what is gluten? What is gluten not? What is gluten free? What brand should I buy? How much should I spend? All of these types of questions that kind of start on day one. And when you get that diagnosis, not only is that hard enough to even get that diagnosis for most of us, but just, you know, where to begin. There's there, there's many different guides. And you there's, of course, the internet is a wealth of information and there are books you can buy. But besides all that, I wanted to, my approach is really to keep it very simple, um, very basic, um, the food portion is key, of course, because as a celiac, really the only, there is no cure, and really the only um, remedy for the illness is really eating gluten-free, and so food becomes, food is already such an, an essential and integral part of all of our lives, just in general, but it becomes that much more important what you eat it's become literally can be in many cases life or death. And so I really wanted to create a space and create a blog where I could show that gluten-free eating didn't have to necessarily be any different than eating with gluten and that you can prepare simple, healthy dishes in a gluten-free way that are, and excuse me for my voice, I have a slight, <clears throat> a slight sinus something going on here. So I apologize for that. But, um, eating eating foods that are are good and that are tasteful tasty and that are um healthy and that that have flavor and that are not dry and crumbly and you know of course baked goods that that taste just like the baked goods that you remember I know for me when I really was focusing on the baking portion of of being a celiac I really was on a quest to create and develop recipes that nobody could tell the difference. You know, I come from a very large family and, you know, most functions are centered around food. And I, I really said, I said, I'm not going to be the person who's worrying about creating a gluten-free dish and then a dish that doesn't contain gluten. If I'm going to cook and I love to cook, I'm going to cook gluten-free for everyone. So when you eat from me, anything that I've made, it's going to always be gluten-free but it's going to always also always be delicious and you'll never know the difference. So that was really the point. And so I started this blog. This is my second blog um, in, two, in December of 2012. And it really the journey that I've been on from that point forward has just been such a long and just winding journey. I'm, I'm, I can't even believe that I'm here today kind of with this blog and, and recording this. It's, it just amazes me how much I've accomplished and, this small little idea that grew from a passion that grew out of necessity has become something so much bigger than I could have ever imagined. So um, the blog really was just supposed to be just very basic and simple, just my daily living, what I'm eating, you know, where am I getting my, my ingredients from that sort of thing. And it slowly grew into something bigger. Um, I started the blog, I was living in Nashville, Tennessee at the time, and I was baking very small scale gluten free baking from recipes that I had developed over time. Um, I've been eating gluten free since 2009, so I had been developing recipes just for myself and just tweaking them. And I eventually, when I started the blog, started to bake for friends and family in the, in the Nashville area. And then that grew to me baking for some small cafes. And then that grew to something where I, I to make the story short, in 2013, I returned back home, which is home for me, is upstate New York. I returned here for various reasons, one of them primarily being my health at the time. And I just wasn't ready to give up the passion. Of course, I continued the blog, and the blog continued to evolve and change, as blogs often do. But I just, 
always had a dream of opening a bakery and the fact that I was gluten-free, I felt didn't need to impede on that dream. So to make this story short, the Gluten-Free Chef blog birthed the Gluten-Free Chef Bakery, which I co-founded with a person that I met. I had a business partner and we, we met, we made a connection and we opened up our bakery in 2014. And I'm really giving you a very quick synopsis of kind of everything and how this all transpired. And I hope that it's a very, as much accurate as me telling it as it is, as it was. Of course, I'm leaving out several details, I'm sure. But again, I'm trying to stick to our time frame here. But we, we opened a bakery um, here in upstate New York called the Gluten-Free Chef Bakery. And um, that was actually a year ago, literally a year ago, we opened the bakery. And, you know... Going through from that point in 2014 to now has been really a very challenging journey, but literally something that I felt has was very important to my develop development as a person and just my character. And um, after opening the bakery, I found I I felt of course I thought that being a bakery owner, I have a hospitality background, and I went to to RIT, which is Rochester Institute of Technology for Hospitality and Food Service Management, and I kind of I felt came full circle. I I also had had the career as a teacher, as a special education teacher, so I have many hats that I wear, as most of us do, and the bakery was something that I was really really happy to start. But as I kind of got into it, I felt that. Um, this is kind of going back to maybe the second question of this episode, what is your passion? I quickly or soon to realize that my blog and and my, my gluten-free living and being a foodie, translating that into a bakery setting and running a bakery at that time last year or when that idea kind of realizing that dream wasn't quite the way, I guess, wasn't the passion. The passion is being a creative being a chef, being a baker, being a recipe writer, being a food blogger. When I was in the midst of the bakery, I felt that I did not have enough time to devote to all of those other things or passions of mine. And I also felt that baking was, I was not enjoying it because it had become a job, an everyday job. And just everything that goes on along with opening and running a business, I felt I was losing that. So fast forward to now, the gluten-free bakery as a bakery, as a storefront, is no more. But, of course, the passion of me being a baker, being a chef, being a recipe developer, those are the passions that I that I now understand are truly what my calling and what my passion is. Sharing these this information and awareness of celiac disease is a passion, and I do that through my blog, the com, and through its you know, linked Facebook page and and the Twitter, Gluten Free Chef 5, and now this podcast. So this was a very quick snapshot of who is the Gluten Free Chef and what what I do and what this space is about. And so this podcast is just an extension of my true passion, and that is um, being an advocate, sharing tips of the trade, of, of now having a lot of experience being a professional baker and baking for retail, but gluten-free. So now that I have all of these added experiences and layers to it, I can now continue to develop my passion, which is to share and to explore and to communicate and to talk both through through word and through the spoken word and also through writing and so I'm I'm really happy now to really have developed these passions and now have this space. So I'm going to quickly wrap up this first this first episode. I hope that you were able to get you know a brief snapshot of 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 who I am and what the Gluten-Free Chef blog is about and and now what acts the Gluten-Free Chef is and of course this will be a, a continuing evolving journey as all of my other endeavors have have become and I hope that we can continue to grow this together. So before I before I um kind of wrap this up, be sure to visit the blog, the Gluten Free Chef blog, and ask your questions. I'm gonna soon be announcing the email that I want people to submit their submissions to that will kind of continue to guide these episodes. 
So I thank you for listening, and I am bowing out. Ask the gluten-free chef.